As there are many types of lifts, I will try today to explain some roping systems on traction lifts. The necessity of using different lifts is created because of different types of sites where the lifts will work. The first scenario that I will describe is the simplest but not a very common one and it's about a lift with one-on-one -on -one traction and a drum gear. The gear is placed on top of the shaft or in the lift room which is placed on top of the shaft. The gear can be placed also in other positions but diverters must be used. In this case the gear will sustain the entire weight of the car and its load. To lift the car, the force used must be bigger than the car weight with load included, plus additional forces such as momentum or different friction forces. To let down the car, the gear will only need to control the movement by breaking the speed of the car descending. In this case, if the motor is controlled by a frequency inverter drive unit, the energy produced by slowing down the car will be converted in heat released by the braking resistors. The speed of the lift will be equal with the speed of the traction ropes. The advantages of using this kind of lift are related with the simplicity of it. But this kind of lift is a big energy consumer and it has also a very limited applicability. The best situation to use this kind of system is when the lift must usually lower weights in most of the times. The second scenario is also the most common one and it's about a lift with one-on-one -on -one traction and a counterweight present. The gear can be placed on top of the shaft or in the lift room which is placed on top of the shaft but there are also other situations as you can see in the images. So, this is a lift with a motor room placed in the proximity of the shaft. Now, a lift with a gear placed in the pit. And a most common situation when the lift has the gear on top of the shaft or in the motor room on top of the shaft. In all these situations, the gear is sustaining the entire weight of the counterweight plus the entire weight of the car and its load. To lift the car, the gear will need to use a force bigger than the difference between the car weight with load included and the counterweight plus additional forces such as momentum or different friction forces. To lift the counterweight, the gear will need to use a force bigger than the difference between the counterweight and the car weight also with load included, plus additional forces such as momentum or different friction forces. The speed of the lift car will be equal with the speed of the traction ropes. This type of roping is reducing the number of diverters which is also decreasing the friction forces and that is why the system is one of the most efficient as per power consumption. As I've said before, this system is also very common and most of the lifts are built like this, but of course that there are situations when it cannot be used or is not recommended, as you will see forward. Another type of roping which is also very used is 2 to 1 traction with counterweight present. In this case the gear can be placed again in many positions which will determine the number of diverters that will be used. Also the diverters configuration can be different as it can be seen in the pictures. Now the gear will need to sustain half of the weight of the car with load included plus half of the counterweight. The other half is sustained by the rope's anchorage points. To lift the car, the gear will need to use a force bigger than half of the difference between the car weight load included and the counterweight plus additional forces such as momentum or different friction forces. To lift the counterweight, the gear will need to use a force bigger than half of the difference between the counterweight and the car weight also with load included, plus additional forces such as momentum or different friction forces. 
the speed of the lift car will be equal with half of the speed of the traction ropes. Because of the increased number of diverters used and because of the increased length of the ropes used, this system is less efficient than the one using one-on-one -on -one traction. But two-to-one traction is required in many situations, especially when the diameter of the ropes must be small as a big shift cannot be fitted because of different reasons. Anyway, in fewer words, an identical gear will drive a lift two times faster on one-on-one -on -one system than two-to-one system, but the force used is almost double in the first case. The last situation that I will present is four-on-one traction with counterweight present. The gear can be placed again in many positions, which will determine the number of the diverters that will be used. Also, the diverter's configuration can be different. The gear will need to sustain only a quarter of the weight of the car with load included, plus a quarter of the counterweight. The other three quarters will be sustained by ropes anchorage points and also by some of the diverters. To lift the car, the gear will need to use now a force equal with quarter of the difference between the car weight load included and the counterweight plus additional forces such as momentum or different friction forces. To lift the counterweight, the gear will need to use a force equal with quarter of the difference between the counterweight and the car weight also with load included plus additional forces such as momentum or different friction forces. The speed of the lift will be equal with quarter of the speed of the traction ropes. Because of the increased number of diverters used and because of the increased length of the ropes used, this system is less efficient than the one using one-on-one -on -one traction or two-to-one. Usually, we will find this system on lifts that are meant to deal with very big loads. Here, a gear for one-on-one -on -one or two-to-one system, it will be too big. Also, the lifts using four-on-one -on -one traction are not meant to be very fast. Of course, that there are also some other traction systems for electrical lifts, but I have only presented the most common ones. When we choose a traction system, there are some factors that we need to consider, such as the required speed of the lift, the maximum load of the lift, if there is any lift room, the total travel of the lift, and so on. Also, there always need to be a correlation between the rope's diameter and the shift's dimensions and between the rope's diameter and different weights. As bigger the rope diameter is, as bigger will be the total load that the lift can handle, but it will also require a bigger traction shift and also bigger diverters.